Good evening and welcome to episode 12 of KBTV, the Kennington Bioscope's online virtual edition of silent films and top piano accompaniment, all of which I, Michelle Facey, have been lucky enough to be presenting to you since we commenced broadcasting these live streams in April of this year, 2020, a year in which many of our familiar activities have been diverted to online interactions without access to our usual venues for live presentations, as with ourselves regarding London Cinema Museum in particular, whose crowdfunder campaign raising funds for them to provide the means to reopen and reimagine continues for a few more days. And please do donate to and share links to the campaign with friends and family if you are able. And we thank you for anything you can do. Of course, the upside of this situation, whilst pining for our previous life of events, but also looking forward 
to hopeful resumption of such activities next year with recent news since we last met here online of vaccinations, our temporary transference to televisual transmissions has afforded us the chance to connect with so many of you around the world. And it really has been heartwarming to read your messages of encouragement and appreciation for all the efforts of Team KB, whether it be via email, on Twitter and Instagram, in the chat box here on YouTube, or the comments left below, or even when you drop us a line as you drop a few coppers in our coffee cup with kindly donations left for us on our Kennington Bioscope coffee page, the link for which you will find below. We thank you most sincerely for watching and interacting with us in whichsoever way you do, and we're delighted to bring you a selection of films tonight where you can take part or simply sit back and enjoy the ride. Our programming team have assembled for you a kaleidoscopic cavalcade of comedy and colour with a grand total of nine short films, all emanating by kind and continuing courtesy from the collections of the Netherlands Eye Film Museum and their UNESCO Memory of the World registered Jean Desmet collection with the much valued assistance of curator Elif Rongen Kenneche. Our first film features a character with whom I'm sure many of you are already familiar, the multi-talented Marcel Perez, appearing here in his comedic guise as Robinette in a prodigious series he made for the Italian Ambrosio Film Company. Now, we featured Perez several times before, so I won't repeat his full biography. And please look back over our previous episodes here on YouTube for more of and about him. But suffice it to say that Marcel went by many personal and professional pseudonyms, playing in, directing and writing comedy in Europe and then across to the US where he became a prolific gag writer for well-known figures before his relatively early passing. His wife in this first short, Robinette Pescatore, is played not by his usual on-screen female partner, Nil de Baracchi, but by Attilio Petromarchi, an actor with only a handful of credits, here cross-dressing opposite Perez. I'm delighted to say we'll enjoy another visit with Marcel Perez at the end of the show, where we'll also get to see Nilda Baraki. But rather than thinking of this second Perez as bookending the broadcast, I like to see it providing us with a kind of round robinette. So after this first piece of frantic comedic action, we'll calm ourselves down with a pretty French pathé scenic, taking us on a turn around the Pontalier Mountains and surrounding area, plus the village of Niort in the eastern area of France near to the Swiss border, all rendered in beautiful stencil colour. And just a note about the opening moment where mention is made of the site of the imprisonment of Mirabeau, I had to look him up, but they're referring to an early leader of the French Revolution, Honoré Gabriel Racchetti, Count of Mirabeau, who'd been exiled by his family and held there near Pontalier for matters arising from his explosive nature in the mid 1770s. Anyway, there'll be nothing quarrelsome in that film. It's all calmness and colour. And I'll see you again after that for our next selection. And both of these first two films are about to be accompanied for you live by Mr. John Sweeney.
Thank you so much, John. Oh. Hang on, I think I'm off centre. Am I in centre, John? OK. Thank you so much, John. That was delightful. We may be well past Halloween now and do catch up on our spooky special from last time if you missed it episode 11 on our YouTube channel, but we have a further triple of tricks and treats for you in this episode and a film involving a character or two whom we encountered in our previous show. Spanish filmmaker Segundo de Jumon is responsible for this part's first film of fun involving magic mirrors from 1908, starring Julien Mathieu as Master of Ceremonies. Jumon had started making films, actualities in his native Spain, then started in on trick films and through the connection to the Pathé Frere company provided by his French actress wife, Julienne, he became an agent for Pathé before the couple moved to Paris and collaborated on producing trick films and developing Pathé stencil colour. It was she who introduced Ramon to this process and it's clear that after a couple of early roles for her in 1905 with other directors, that from the following year and for the next 30 or so of her film appearances up to 1909, when she ceased her screen career, that she was key to their scripts and production. And of course, the colour processes used so effectively. Not for nothing is she often shown as the master of ceremonies in these delightful shorts. And if you look at Julienne's Wikipedia page entry, you'll see a wonderful GIF looped frames from the husband and wife team's futuristic film, Hotel Electrique, showing her having her hair groomed and dressed by invisible hands via an, via an early stop animation of a hairbrush at work. That film was made in the same year, 1908, as the one we were about to see, demonstrating Madame Mathieu's delight with some magic mirrors. Pathé Frère put good money behind this power couple to rival the success of Georges Méliès' Star Studios, and we're about to see the originator at work. The king of the trick film, Georges Méliès, of whom Comon was accused of being derivative, but really on reflection is complimented by being so inspirational to the Spaniard Comon and envied by Pathé Frère, appears next in our programme with his Dirigiable Fantastique from 1906 also known in the USA as Inventor Crazy Brains and His Wonderful Airship, an overly descriptive title which pretty much gives the game away. Nonetheless, it's a delightful tranche of fantastic French fancy in which we'll see superb splashes of colour and the master Melier acting up a storm. Then we return the helm to Ramon and a 1909 film chronicling a Voyage sur Jupiter, a film bursting with ideas and cataloguing different methods of diversion and enchantment, again rendered enchantingly in beautiful stencil colour. Moving Picture World described it in August of that year as a magic from the Pathé, in which one of those interesting trips to the stars is varied by a trip to Jupiter and the experiences of the man who insisted upon going. They form a lively film which amuses, and while it does not instruct, it certainly does not leave any disagreeable impression. It is well coloured and is perfectly clear in its technical details. So thank you for that, 1909 Movie Mag. And thank you to our accompanists for this second part of the show, for we have joining us the lovely Lillian Henley with a specially pre-record pre made just yesterday, followed by John Sweeney playing live again in the middle, followed by another special pre-record by Mr. Colin Sell. So take it away, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll be back again with you once we return safely from our trip to outer space.
Welcome back and thank you to Lillian, John and Colin. And we're welcoming Lillian straight back, I'm glad to say, for the first in our final four films and a super close-up look at the lifestyle of The Paper Bee, a little nature documentary, again in lovely stencil colour. And Lillian told us she very much enjoyed playing for this, which will indeed be plain to hear. Then we are joined live by maestro Costas Fotopoulos, for another pair of films from the studios of Pathé Frère, both from 1911, both containing an element of sorcery and both directed by Georges Denola. Amour de Page and Les Légendes des Andines are also both set in a sort of romanticised medieval period with plenty of opportunities for well-costumed magical mischief. And for our final film, we are light in Robinette's Nest again with Madame Igella Robinette, an ironically titled Miss Robinette. This short shows Perez working in tandem with his partner, Italian actress Nilda Baracki, who appeared as his comedy wife, Robinette, from 1911 through to 1915 in his European films, and who then accompanied Perez to the States and was, much like Marcel, found under several pseudonyms listed variously as Babette Perez and Nilda Babette. Her own contract for comedies in the US was noteworthy enough to be mentioned in the trade papers. In February 1918, when it was announced in Motion Picture News as Nilda Babette engaged for one year, which was to be for the 12 Jester Company comedies opposite Perez, and about which it was said that her work so far had been so satisfactory. She continued to work with Marcel until there seemed to be a passing of the ways in 1919, because of, or after which time, he found a new female comedy partner in Dorothy Earle, with whom he married and had a child, Nilda having returned to Italy and disappeared from sight by any name after only two more roles in her home country. And playing for our last film, we again have the pleasure of the company of Mr. Colin Sell, and I'll meet you back here afterwards.
Well, Robinette being pursued around town certainly put me in mind of Buster Keaton a few years hence being chased by hordes of women in Seven Chances. What a smorgasbord of comedy and colour we've enjoyed for episode 12 and our deepest gratitude to the Eye Film Museum, John Desmet Collection and curator Elif for their assistance and generosity. And huge thanks, of course, go to all the musicians for their, their continuing generosity of time and talents to help share these films with you in the best way that we can for your enjoyment wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much to Lillian Henley, Colin Sell, John Sweeney and Costas Fotopoulos for their fabulous playing. And further thanks are due to John and Costas for handling the live streams and handovers between the three of us to bring you the show this evening live from London. Huge thanks to Todd Higginson for all his work in preparing the films for tonight's broadcast with all sorts of technical wizardry, which is well beyond my ken, be it doing battle with compact, compact, can't say it, be it doing battle with words, be it doing battle with compatible bit rates or translating and creating subtitles and more besides. Plus, of course, managing the live chat box here on our channel. Thank you also to Todd and John for their programming of this episode. And we would like you to make a note in your online viewing diaries for our next live broadcast, episode 13 of KBTV, going out on Wednesday, December the 16th, as we're excited to announce that we have secured some Christmas crackers from our own national archive, the British Film Institute, with the kind assistance of curator Bryony Dixon and the BFI technical team. So please do join us for that. If you've enjoyed the show this evening, then if you feel so inclined, we'd be most grateful for anything you wish to put our way via our coffee page. And don't forget to subscribe and share links to our channel with your friends and family so they can catch up on our 12 episodes of Silent Film Magic. And thank you all to also to the rest of the Kenton Bioscope team and the Cinema Museum volunteers for their assistance in getting the word out about tonight's show. I'm Michelle Facey and I send you my warmest thanks for joining us on this dark November night and sharing in the glow of comedy and colour brought to you in this broadcast. Stay safe and keep well and we'll see you all again very soon. Goodbye for now. Bye. Baby, did I do? Do you love your baby? Sure, I love a baby. Precious baby, did I do? 